need to come to order and click on. Oh, sorry. Second. Need to come to order, call the roll. Mayor Mann. Present. Councilor Patricell. Present. Councilor McGrath. Present. Clerk, please read the minutes from our last meeting. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we dispense to the minutes of the previous meeting. I second that. Accepting them as is, call the roll. Councilor Patricell. In favor. Councilor McGrath. In favor. Mayor Mann. In favor. Court sponsors, committees. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, unfortunately, tonight we've had to postpone our presentation that was scheduled for the Building and Code Department due to uh, illness uh, in the family for uh, Paula Bossier from the building department. Uh, so we will be rescheduling that uh, for some time next month. Uh, but in two weeks from tonight, we will have the presentation from the finance department, uh, which will go over the uh, operations of the department and its staff in 2018, and the final closeout numbers for 2018's finances. So two weeks from tonight will be the financial report uh, for 2018. And no, we'll probably push that into May. Um, Falls is a, a little bit more lengthy with some statistics, so we'll have him uh, get into that then. Uh, we do still have the Planning and Community Revitalization Department, so we might slide that schedule one way or the other. Gotcha. I'll have, uh, I'll have some dates for everyone for the next week. All right. What does that bring us to roll business? Yes. And we have any? We do. In old business, we have a public hearing. Public hearing for the purpose of hearing those persons that wish to be heard regarding proposed local law number three for the year 2019. A local law to amend chapter 108 of the Code of the City of Waterbury. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Can we introduce it and start the process? Yeah, so this, uh, this local law is an update um, to the fees the, the main reason for this is a change in the fees for the uh, dog impoundments um, at, from $67 to $70 at the uh, Hudson Mohawk Humane Society. Uh, they, they set the rates for us, um, and they've increased it from $67 to $70. So that is the cost that we pay, uh, so that is the cost that we charge uh, to those owners of dogs that are impounded. And we need the law so we can charge it? Correct. As opposed to just a contract with them, right? Right. Okay, so what we're hearing comment on tonight is we're changing our law just to be in concert with what we're getting charged with by the main society to uh, put dogs up when we catch them on the streets. Does anyone want to talk about that? Do we? Right. Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? Why don't we charge more than the seventy dollars due to the fact that we have our officers have to bring those dogs down down to the uh, kennel? Well, I mean, you could certainly legislate and increase the fees. I know that from uh, looking at <clears throat> Cohoes's law, I believe they charge um, a fee of, and I'm just, uh, I believe it's like a hundred dollars for the first impoundment and then $200 for the second pump could be more. Um, the issue that you have is there's sometimes where, and when we enacted this uh, law previously, I had spoken with Chief Boisbert about the amount of time that a dog is at the uh, society. So if you charge $100, okay, they charge a daily fee. Okay, so once an owner of a dog uh, realizes that the dog is impounded, they have to come to the city of Waterville, they have to wait the statutory redemption period, and then they pay the city of Waterville the fee. But if you pay $100, okay, the dog could be there for five days at $70 you know, a day or $67 a day. So that's why we decided to do it per day, per day and to be um, equal to what is being charged by the society. But you certainly can increase the fees for that. But if you leave it at a flat rate or a flat fee, you know, depending upon what that amount is, the city may be losing losing money by paying the society for what they they charge us. I was thinking like more of in addition to 
75 a day rather than 70, so that the right. city's reimbursed for the time spent by staff. To but this is fine. You know, I just throwing that out there. Could the wording be in place that it, there's no specific amount that it's charged contingent upon the the fee charged by then we don't have to worry about this next year or two years and every year after this yeah and that's the thing I mean as you can tell I mean we've we've increased it every time that right. you know and I it's think. you're talking what a few dollars this time from 67 to yeah. yeah it's been increased over the year you know a few dollars yeah. um, it seems a waste of time. see the, the the controlling statute is under the agriculture markets law and you know they have certain um, you know, it can, it's up to the municipality. The municipality has discretion to set that fee. So, just using Cohoes as an example of, of they charge a certain fee for a first impoundment. So, um, you know, certainly open for you know su further suggestions. Yeah. And we can look at it further, but for the purposes of moving forward, I think it's appropriate that we amend it this way, and then we can look at it again. Uh, you know, in the meantime. Yeah. Sure. In hindsight, it's, it's not bad to have have you have to look at it each year. We're going to have another example of not having looked at something each year, and you fall behind. But do you want to? Uh, do you guys want to talk on it? Anybody got a dog? I probably get caught too. Who's in front of the dog? You may say. Now, who is impounding them and what we take them to? Police department. The police well, we department. Have well, we don't Currently, the police department. They're putting them in the cruisers? Yeah. Uh, they've been doing that. Ron Boyce was always against that. Yeah, well, we did have a guy with a special vehicle, but. 35000 a year. 20 hours a week. I need a new truck. I need a new truck. All right. Are we okay with this? Okay. Yes, it is for now? Yes. Yeah. I'm all right. All right. So, all right. We'll close the public commentary. <laughs> and move on to new business. Okay. In new business, we have local law number three, year 2019, a local law to amend chapter 108 of the Code of the City of Waterbury. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on this local law. I second that. Uh, we'll have call for discussion, but we'll make a note that we had no minimal public comment and a couple comments from up here about revising this possibly for next time around. Any other discussion? No. Okay. Scott, call the roll. Councilman Patricelli. In favor. Councilman McGrady. In favor. Mayor Manning. In favor. <clears throat> up next, we have ordinance number 1997, an ordinance of the City of Waterville providing that Chapter 127 building construction and fire prevention of the code of the city of Waterville be amended. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to yeah. uh, to accept it. Make a motion to accept ordinance number 1997 as written. I'll second it. Discussion? So as, uh, as indicated, this is an ordinance that uh, amends chapter 127 uh, of the Code of the City of Waterville, <clears throat> specifically section 127-5B, schedule of fees. Um, so I was approached by the building department a few months back and they had requested uh, certain amendments to um, fees for certain types of uh, permits and other activities. So essentially uh, the ordinance has been provided to members of the council. For an example, um, if one were to um, go to the building department and ask for a permit for interior demolition. Previously, the cost would be $50 for that fee. Um, as indicated in the proposed ordinance, uh, the fee would be 1% of the cost of the project or a minimum of $50. Um, so as you can see, um, the underlying sections are what the changes are and the cross out sections are what's being deleted. Councilman Patricelli. In favor. Councilman McGrady. In favor. Mayor Mann. In favor. Up next we have ordinance number 1998, 
an ordinance of the City of Waterville, providing that Chapter 244, Streets and Sidewalks of the Code of the City of Waterville, be amended. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on the ordinance 1999. I second that. Discussion on this? So this corresponds with a later resolution uh, regarding street excavation and uh, digs in the public right-of-way. Uh, this particular ordinance um, changes the fee, uh, which again uh, is in the uh, updated policy. Uh, the fee will now be $150 for uh, the permit for each dig and $3 per square foot for each dig. Uh, this is in line with uh, other municipalities as to what they have as well. Would you describe the dig? Um, for this to be for like water lines? Yep, so if somebody wants to put in a water lateral, they pay $150 for the permit, and then for however big uh, the hole was that they dug and had to um, remediate, it would be $3 per square foot, which would be tacked on after the work is done. And what, in relation to the sidewalks? Well, same for the sidewalk. So if, if they dig anywhere in the public right of way, it would be the same thing. Um, so one of the other things that this does is encourage smaller digs in certain areas, that way there's not as big of patches and things like that. I don't understand what the three dollars per square foot is for. The size of the hole. Yeah, but I mean, you're paying for a permit. It's up to the uh, water doing the job to replace whatever there, whether it's concrete or blacktop or whatnot. So why should there be an additional fee? On it's it? not so much a replacement. It's to keep, it's to, as Jeremy said, have some incentive to keep this hole as small as possible. So if you if you paid 150, you could dig a 20 foot hole. And for 150 down digs a three foot hole. I'm sure you're not going to do that. I'm sure there's other utilities in the way that you may hit. Remember when I we did my bit or my my house, they did a water line and it didn't have that which box? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the hole was the hole was all the way across the street and down and that's an exceptional case where it's yeah. sort of well, you would use that box, you know. It's not just aimed at uh, homeowners and contractors, it's also aimed at the utilities. So this helps control national grid as well. Well, we'll see how it goes when they start complaining. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. Nicole Rowe? Councilor Batch yourself. In favor. Councilor McGrady? In favor. Mayor Manning? In favor. <clears throat> Next we have ordinance number 1999. An ordinance of the City of Waterville providing that the code of the City of Waterville be amended by repealing chapter 98, advertising materials. I'd like to make a motion to accept ordinance number 1999 as written. I'll second it. Discussion? Yes, so. <clears throat> Chapter 98 of the Code of the City of Waterbleed is titled Advertising Materials. And uh, recently looked at the older code back in 1972, I believe when it was first enacted. Um, and basically, the um, law talked about the distribution of advertising materials and samples and penalties for those offenses. However, back in 2003, it was amended to add um, regulations for outdoor signs and displays. But we now have, as you know, uh, our zoning ordinance was amended that has sign regulations. So um, there, are, there are provisions in uh, this chapter 98 that are, you know, in conflict with uh, the sign regulations and it's important to obviously have one, you know, law that deals with sign regulations as opposed to two. So we felt it would be appropriate to just entirely repeal Chapter 98, and that's the purpose of the order. Okay. Is there anything in it that we don't want to lose? Well, I mean, of significance. We've talked about, I think we've talked about this uh, before. I mean, it talks about advertising materials. I know Don and I had spoken about this, about, you know, it's unlawful for any person to tag or place says any sign, bill, poster, or other advertisement um, on private property. I don't, I can't recall when this was ever uh, enforced. Um, however, it just doesn't fit within, in my opinion, 
you know, the, the, the sign regulations. I think before they had sign regulations, they had this advertising materials ordinance. So, um, you know, if, if, if advertising becomes an issue where people start placing, you know, cards and advertisements and mailboxes and brushes and porches and things of that nature, then I think we, we probably could revisit the issue. But I personally, I don't think that it's needed. Um, but I think the main point of it is because we have signed regulations in our zoning ordinance and uh, this was amended to include those regulations back before where we had before we had signed regulations. So I think that's the purpose of it. A lot of what it states about with the advertising materials is really covered in signs. You can't post them in certain areas on poles and trees and things like that. So it's still uh, the sign code still addresses that. And you can't put any flyers in mailboxes anyway. That's uh, federal offense. Of course. Cover it to the council. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. All right. <laughs> okay. Include everything but Aaron's comment that it's a federal offense. <laughs> okay, Scott, call the roll. Councilman Patrick Sutton. I'm in favor. Councilman McGrath. In favor. Mayor Mann. Be in favor. Next, we have resolution number 9601. <clears throat> the Council of the City of Waterville hereby authorizes and directs Scott O'Reilly, City Clerk, Clerk to the Council, to advertise once in the official newspaper of the City that sealed bids will be received by the City Clerk's Office of the City of Waterville in Waterville, New York, until 10 a.m. on Monday, April 22nd, for roadway resurfacing through the Consolidated Highway Improvement Program, or CHIPS. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on resolution. I second that. Discussion? <clears throat> so this is our annual CHIPS paving. Uh, now that the state budget has been passed, we can begin to move forward with this. Um, we're looking to perform this work earlier this year, um, and we're also looking at it within a tighter time frame, uh, where all of this work would be completed prior to Memorial Day. Um, one of the main reasons for that is uh, one of the areas that will be paving is 16th Street between Broadway and 2nd Avenue, which uh, at this point I would say is probably the worst section of of street in the city of Waterville. Uh, so we want to get that done quickly, get it out of the way, and certainly before the Memorial Day Parade, which passes right through there. Uh, but all of the streets uh, that have been outlined in the documentation that the council has received, um, we have spec in here to be completed before that date. Uh, we have spoken to some that have bid before, and they feel that it is easily accomplishable to be able to do it. Uh, they expect it to be about a uh, one week uh, turnaround to be able to get this done. Some have stated even sooner. So, with all of the road work that we did last year, we limited it down a little bit, and of course, we put a tighter time frame on it to make sure that it gets done quickly. Okay. Good. 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 Mm -hmm. Call the roll. Councilman Patricelli? In favor. Councilman McGrath? In favor. Mayor Mann? In favor. Next, we have resolution number 9602. The council of the City of Waterville hereby authorizes and directs Scott O'Reilly, City Clerk, to Clerk to the Council, to advertise once in the official newspaper of the city that sealed bids will be received by the City Clerk's Office in the City of Waterville until 2 p.m. on Thursday, April 25th, for the Waterville Energy Redu Reduction Program LED lighting project for various sites and locations in the City of Waterville. I'd like to make a motion to accept resolution number 9602 as written. And I'll second. Discussion? So we've spoken about this project several times over the past uh, few months. This is a NYSERDA grant that the city received for our completion and award as a clean energy community. Uh, the city received $80,000 uh, to complete a project that would reduce the carbon footprint. And we'll be replacing, uh, with that money, we'll be replacing all of the city-owned lights in the city buildings, as well as city-owned street lights um, with LED lights. Um, that, so that replacement of those lights will not cost the city anything. It will be in line with the, the grant amount, but it will reduce the, the cost for uh, energy consumption for the city. Um, this, uh, this is the bid specification for the project, putting it out to advertise, and our, our procurement requires us to bid for this project. It's the Hutchin Shores Park. No? Hutchin Shores Park requires us to bid, yes. Good. 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 Call the roll. Councilman Patrick Sutton? In favor. <coughs> Councilman McGrath? In favor. Mayor Mann? In favor. Next, we have resolution number 9603. Council of the City of Waterville determines that the proposed Waterville Comprehensive Plan project is a Type 2 action 
and that no further action or review relative to this project is required by seeker. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on this resolution. I second that. Discussion? Previously, the council approved the use of program income funds to update the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, this is the next step in the process. Since this is the uh, comprehensive plan, it is a planning study, it is considered a type two action under seeker, and therefore there's no review, no further review necessary for this. And once, uh, if this is uh, approved by the council, uh, we should have a uh, RFP ready for the next meeting to be able to go out uh, for this and, and begin that process. I'm good. good. Okay, then. Call the roll. Councilman Dr. Seven. In favor. Councilman McGrady. In favor. Mayor Manning. In favor. And next we have resolution number 9604. Council of the City of Waterville hereby approves and adopts the City of Waterville Street Excavation Policy. I'd like to make a motion to accept resolution number 9604 as written. I'll second it. Discussion? As previously discussed, this updates and clarifies the language in the street excavation policy. Um, one of the things is the, the fee that was previously mentioned. Also clarifies who to contact, um, how to proceed, and uh, as well as the process for remediation of any digs that are done. So it talks about uh, filling with concrete, the compaction, um, everything that's necessary to make sure that there's uh, no confusion as to what needs to be done if you dig in the streets or sidewalks in the city. Well written. Well written. Thank you. David Dressel, Mark Eddy, where um, full parts of putting like we covered everything. The uh, there's a time frame of notice before they can actually fill in. Before, with, with, I mean, somebody has to actually. Yeah, it, ha it, it states that it has to be inspected by uh, either. Or the, it gets ripped up. Yes, by the highway supervisor or by the right. water supervisor before it can be done. Yeah, just want to make sure it's because yeah. that's yeah. the you know the eight o'clock at night fill in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Call the roll, Scott. Councilman Patrick Sutton. In favor. Councilman McGrath. In favor. Mayor Mann. In favor. And Mr. Mayor, to the best of my knowledge, that's all we have in new business. Okay. Appropriations accounting. We have nothing but next week we got Mike's report. Anything before public comment period? Uh, lawn and leaf pickup is going to begin. Um, so now that the snow is all gone and um, depending on where you are, there's a lot of leaves on the ground. If you go through Hudson Shores Park, there's a lot of leaves on the ground, so uh, you can start cleaning up your leaves and putting it, uh, putting them in the bags. And also next Saturday is the Keep the Leaf Heat Day, um, so that will be uh, we'll have uh, a lot of volunteers out and about cleaning up uh, public property. For those of you that are not available to clean up public property, we also uh, encourage you to clean up your own property. And this is the, the beginning of a spring cleanup for the City of Waterville. So uh, it's a, a pretty big day for those that. I do volunteer. There will also be some refreshments afterwards uh, around 11, 30, 12 o'clock at the Dome. Um, so please participate if you're available. What time does it start? Uh, nine nine o'clock. o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah. You said they're starting to pick up yard waste tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, just, to, just to make the comment, I, I had a community forum uh, last Saturday uh, was attended by about 30 uh, residents uh, went over a number of different items a couple of suggestions it took about two hours um, I'm compiling a lot of the uh, the conversations and data right now and I'll be able to bring that back to you you know and, and most of it was in really um, really great suggestions and uh, you know, not a not like a, a complaint session but just um, overall um, comments that was uh, pretty good for the speaker. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to bring up about the that the, the uh, we had talked a couple of times about the 787 fence with the billboards and signs and things like this and I know we had a couple of conversations on it. Um, I gave you a, a sort of like a idea on what we were thinking about moving out in front of the fence, um, and then you came up with a great idea about uh, incorporating that in with the um, the engineers or the architects for the bike pit bike, bike gap. Um, how's that been moving along? Yes, if the, if the council would like uh, for me to move forward with that, I can uh, certainly get in touch with the um, engineers for it. It seems uh, it seems like a, a good fit because they're dealing with that corridor already, um, and so uh, also they, they coordinate with DOT. Um, 
So any of our coordination have to deal with DOT with the fence or the right of way in those areas, they'd be able to handle that. So. And I'm sure they'd be more than willing to, to take that. Um, one other thing on it. Uh, are we discussing anything about potholes? Have they been <coughs> maybe addressed on a fallen basis? Uh, yeah, so if, I mean, the, the, the guys are out and about. They've been filling them in uh, with cold patch for now because a lot of the plants are still closed. They're uh, still closed? Yeah, the, the plant that we usually go to, um, they now open a secondary plant, which is down in the port. Um, so we have to modify our trucks to be able to pick up at the port to bring it back because uh, you have to have netting over the top to make sure that sure. nothing comes out of it. Uh, so we're in the process of doing that. So we've been using a cold patch up until this point. But if you, um, you can call either the clerk's office or the general manager's office. You can uh, email myself or Scott um, to get it in. We keep a running tab on all the calls that we get for potholes. But of course, you know, the guys are out and about and looking as well. Um, but as always, they don't see every street. So uh, our, our best reporters are the, the people that live in the city and that are driving through it. We know that it's bad, especially in certain areas. So, if you if you see something, please let us know, and we'll be out there as quickly as possible to get it filled. Have people been to Sand Lake or something? Um, they were not last week, but they may have opened this week, so we may get up there too. And what's the status now of the billboards? The issue with the billboards. So the in the code, it stated that um, all billboards would have to be removed five years or 60 months after the adoption of the code, which uh, that time frame came up in September of 2018. Um, so after reviewing that, I um, ordered the building department to send out violations for that, notifications on it. Um, so they have been sent, and we've received uh, a lot of feedback back. I know I, I received a letter, and I believe the mayor has also in regards to Currently, it states that the billboards are supposed to come down. That was stated right now. That's how it's letter that you received? No, that's how it's stated in the code right Oh, now. right. Yeah. They should come right. down. Okay. But the letters that we received were asking not to take them down. Right, yeah. Are we we're going to revisit that? Are we going to discuss that? Or is that something that we should discuss um, and look at? Um, it's. It's in the code, so it would be a council decision to, to make any changes to that. So I'm, I wasn't a part of the original adoption of the code, so I'm not sure of the reasoning behind right. why That's they were expected to come down. So, um, Are there minutes to that meet, those meetings and that maybe something that might <laughs> explain it? There definitely are. Yes, there was. That, that would help. At least that would help before you're making a decision to be able to help us ask for rationale on it and then kind of make a judgment call from there. Yeah, no, there was a committee that developed the zoning code. Yeah. Could they be provided? Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, not tomorrow, but... Yeah, you know, no, I, I believe so. I'm not sure if they're typed <laughs> or just recorded. I know that they were recorded, so... Okay. <coughs> and one more thing is, as um, it was discussed, too. This has been a complaint, I think, for the last few years, and it's, it always seems to be that... Um, it's on 19th Street. I don't know if she contacted you today, but she, her, her mother did in the past. Um, in front of Caruso's with the, the curb, they're, they're always complaining about their tires going up against the curb and, um, and puncturing a tire. And so I if they believe, hit the curb with the tire, it pops? It, it pops. And um, I believe it was um, when um, uh, Chris, Chris Caruso was uh, complaining about it. And she, she had... Mark Leeson go up and he was going to grind it or something. I don't know if that ever happened or not. Okay. You take a look at that. I'm not. You ever hear of it? You find out if we can grind the grand curves or something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how they go, but but they're the entire street is grand curve. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to grind the grand. Huh? Kind of hard to grind. Right. I can see that. I don't know if it would. I think that I think where she was complaining about where it was a joint and the joints offset. And that's a that's a you know a, you know puncture weight thing. It's the same curving up and down the street. It's, yeah. Um, and I think it was perceived as more operator error than. From yeah. Well, it is. I'm sure if you hit it, it it's going to yes. pop. But it's that's the right. You bring it again. I don't know that we've had any recent. Oh, no, you have one today. <laughs> I know when I was city clerk, I had one complaint about it. Was that, was it Chris? No. Uh, 
up somebody else. So we'll take a look at that area versus yeah. the other. Right. Yeah, I think uh, Mark Katie was playing to go out to Hill Guy tomorrow. I think he had spoken to the first day as well. Luan, yeah. Luan, 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 Luan. 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 yeah. Luan. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Just got one thing. Walt Willard uh, on 1st uh, Street, 700 block, is very happy with his uh, new shutoff. He's no longer a foot and a half above ground. So thank the water department. Good. <laughs> After two years. Well, you had Dave's ear here that Yeah. Okay. That's all from up here. That's here from me, folks. It's got to open public comment period. <clears throat> At this time, the council is authorized the public comment period. If you wish to address the council, you must step forward, state your name and address for the record, and you will have two minutes to address the council on any matters you wish. At the end of your comment, the council may reply or choose to reply at a later date, if they so choose. Sorry. Okay, Christine Krauslaw, 1624 7th Avenue, and it's about Clinton Park. I'd like to know if the cameras are on there. Okay, I was there the other day. The park looks great. The 18th Street section uh, in the back of the park looks fantastic. Unfortunately, and the park is clean, for little bits that are around that we go and we pick up when we go. Um, there was an apparatus that was installed last year, the big one that came from Sacred Heart, broken. Okay, the steering wheel was totally broken off. Uh, many times you go by that park in the evening, not the morning or the afternoon, it's after school. You have, you have older children and they're very destructive in that park. Um, I have to tell you, when you look at my poor little kids and they come out with the steering wheel, you know, Chris, look, I'm like, how did they even break it off? You know, it was, it was heavy metal and they just got it off. There's no reason. Half the time the swings are swung around. They're riding on the handicap swing, which shouldn't be allowed. Now, do we have a camera or not on the park? We have lights, but do we have cameras? Do not believe there are any cameras on that park now. Is there any chance that we can have the patrolman maybe walk in, and I mean not, not constant, just in and out in the evening, even if you want to play real ball with the kids, just to let them know that you're keeping an eye on the park and it's not destroyed. I mean, the park is looking good and people are trying to keep it up, but when they're destroying the apparatus on it, what good is it? So that was my only thing. I, I think the parks are looking great. You know, and we'll do our part to help clean it up, but not when the kids are destroying it. So please, you know, see if you can get somebody, even like to walk and go and play basketball. Group, just check the park out, walk through it. We have enough police on the, on the road that they can just park and just walk through. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The DPW, uh, you know, somewhat of an early spring, thank DPW you. was out and cleaning all the playground parks right away, so uh, got them up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, now their, their focus is on Hudson Shore, which is a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. It all runs through the police, so that's we'll get yeah. it to Chief Spain. And if there's a camera, he can run the camera. Yeah. Huh? Still going through. Anyone else tonight? Well, these guys are having a sidebar. I have a uh, one on 23rd. I've been thinking about for a while. Does anyone else want to talk? Say something? Speak? Sue, so you have um, had a lot, you, you can see a lot from the playground there. Chris. Have you noticed uh, an increase of kids? Yes, again. What time? What time is that? They were there two thirty the other right after school the other day, and then they were there again last night. Any time you go by that park, you'll find a lot of kids that hang it. There's not a lot of the grass, and they're pretty abusive to their big kids. Can we go back to them and their families to make this? I know it's exciting. We we did receive calls. Uh, I believe this past week, or uh, and had just and had dispatch officers down there. Anything. No, no, no. That's not the question. My question is, oh. if children have the right to play in the park, okay, if they're swinging on the handicap swing, should we call the police if they're older? What? 
Yeah, we really don't have another mechanism right now, so, yeah. No, they, they really have to be I mean, really vandalizing or, you know, um, looking as if they're going to vandalize to be able to do it. You may, um, be, you may be able to just to call and, and recommend them to take a ride through, or send a car through. That may... Yeah, by the time they vandalize or they look like they're going to, it's already too late yeah. by the time a car gets there. Mm -hmm. So maybe just that call the station and ask for a ride by. I think in his presentation, Chief Spain said, call. Yeah. There's no bad ideas. Give him a call. We have had a, a pretty strong presence in the school lately, so the, the police department and the, and the officers do have a good relationship with the, with the students. So if it's a lot of the students that are going in there, they already have a good relationship with them. So just then, you know, if you call them just because the kids are in there, you know, they're, they're going to go in there and they're going to have a conversation with them. So uh, I wouldn't hesitate to call if you think something could be happening or may happen soon. Okay, no one else wants to speak? All right, I'm going to uh, ask for a motion to go to executive session to discuss a legal matter. And we'll have the whole panel here, plus I'm going to invite uh, Paul Goldman, Esquire. I'll make a motion and we we'll move into executive session. I second that. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Mayor Mayor? In favor. Councilman Patricelli? In favor. Councilman McGrath? In favor. Adjourn to the session.